Well, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Oh, you're going to be so glad you tuned in today. One of my favorite people in the whole wide world is here. I'll tell you who that is in just a second, but I want you to feel welcome. I uh, just, that's what, it's what Home Keepers is about. You know, we recently did a program about hospitality, and I hope that even through the TV camera, you feel like you will be so welcome to come in here and join us in the kitchen and all those good things. So this is the best we could do for right now, but I want you to know you're welcome anytime. And if you're brand new, this is the only time you'll be brand new. From now on, you're going to be one of us. We really want you to be part of Home Keepers. Ah, okay, the guest I was talking about is Carol Kent, and I really have learned to love this lady in the Lord. Uh, I first heard her several years ago when this wound in her life was so, so uh, open and gaping and bleeding, and that is that her one and only beloved son in prison for the rest of his life. And uh, how the Lord has just turned that in so many good directions. And, and if you watch us all the time, you know that she's on once a month. So today she's with us again. And uh, she wants to talk about something that I'd never given that much thought to, and that is the term resilient. And the more I've thought about it, we really do need to put a light on this. Uh, God wants you to be resilient. You know, he wants you to bounce back from adversity and he wants you to not ever get stuck. Isn't it interesting though, that we talk about resilient and resilience and in this, uh, in my newspaper this week, uh, this little kind of insert, it's called weather life storms, resilience is essential and it, it can be strengthened. So I think we're on the right track here and I'm anxious for you to see what, especially what Carol has to say. And I'm going to join Stephanie. Wanda came into my office with this. She says, there's a great recipe, and it's called cowboy caviar. And somehow you don't think of those two things, uh, you know, kind of in the same sentence. But when you see what we do with this, you're going to love it. Uh, anybody that's had anything to do with this recipe is excited about it. Before I join her, though, I, I wish I had the, you know, the talent to tell you how good this book is. It, it goes into the kind of detail that you need, but it's not, you don't feel like you're reading something real academic. It's something you can understand. It goes into fats and, and um, how important beans are and how many calories you probably need. Just all kinds of information in this one book by this great, great Christian doctor, Dr. Don Colbert. It's yours for a gift of $20 to this program. I believe the retail price is almost $25, so what a bargain that is. And all of us love bargains so much. So if you use your credit card, there's a the number, 1-800-229-0059. You just dial that and someone will take your information. Or you can send a check to Home Keepers of at least $20. We'll get it out to you. I'm telling you, most, I, I, most people do think about their weight once in a while, but this book, I think, can answer any question you have. So take it while supplies last. And have you ever had the real caviar? No. Oh, I've tasted it. What's it taste like? It's little fish eggs. It's yucky. Is it salty? Yeah. That's what I figured why, it would be salty. <laughs> why do people think it's such a big deal? Because it costs a lot of money. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. I would never spend money on it, I'll tell you that. But this, I would. I've had this before because it's on the Daniel Fest. Uh-huh. It's, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's so good. You're going to want this one, I promise you. Yes. And, and it's true, and you could Google it, I'm sure there's a lot of places you can get it, that Daniel fast is going to make you healthy. Oh, yeah. You know, after is... Daniel and his friends finished it, said they look better. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you feel better after uh -huh. you're yeah. the Daniel fast. You feel so much okay. better. Okay. So, okay, so we had a show, and Arthlene <laughs> tried to cut an avocado. The avocado did not did not cooperate and the seed would not come out uh -huh. like she couldn't pull it out with her two hands she could not pull it away so today she's going to redeem gonna herself again. carefully with the avocados but i don't i don't do it life like, scare like me. A, a chef i i do it my way okay do it your way i'm see, gonna take it like that and see look how beautiful that one is that was just a bad avocado bad avocado okay so i have tomatoes i have black beans I have black-eyed peas. Now, these are just supposed to be chopped up and put in it, right? Correct. Okay. Right. Black-eyed peas. I, I have, have avocado almost every single day of my life. Frozen corn that's thawed. 
kind of. <laughs> when you take a bite of this, watch the corn, okay? Because it's kind of frozen and you're already having dental problems. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need to have any dental problems on the show. Yeah. Okay, we have cilantro, which I love. Cilantro is a love or hate thing. Love, oh, yeah, love, love, and love Please cilantro. cut back on those onions a little bit. Oh, I'm going to trust like me. <laughs> too, too much. This is um, yellow bell pepper. If you watch us regularly, you will know that we do it the way we want. And you that's what you do at home. You know, some people don't like things. You just don't put it, put don't it put in. put that much in. So I'm just going to put some I never onions. put the amount of sugar in a recipe. No. Okay. So we're going to mix this all up, and then I'm going to do the dressing while you're still cutting the avocados. Mm -hmm. And the dressing is a third of a cup of olive oil, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons of lime juice, yum, 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 one teaspoon of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay, these things, the other stuff, you know, we have amounts, but really, it's a can of black beans, a can of uh, black-eyed peas. It can be, that can be more to your liking, yeah, where this needs to have a little so more. So uh, colorful. Yeah. I'm oh, this is going to be so good. So yummy. Mm. You know, it's really, it's really a great time if you like to cook, because recipes are everywhere. Mm-hmm. I remember, you know, my mom, they kind of had one little book, mm -hmm. or they had it scratched out on a piece of paper. But you can go on the internet, you can go anywhere and just... I'm reading a book right now, and the author's talking about feeding her family uh -huh. and cooking for... Not, she doesn't do it every night, but like three nights a week, she really gets in, and that's how she tells her family, I love you, and I'm making you this right. for you, and that's, that's how she feels about it. Okay, so, how are you doing there? Well, I'm doing good, <laughs> except my hands are really dirty. Okay. <laughs> Probably the way the chefs do it is better than the way I do it. Have you ever seen Chef Gaston do it? Can I have these? Yep. Okay, thank you. Oh, I love avocado. I do too, and this is perfect. Here. Perfectly ripe. Here, just cut that one up right there, please. Uh, you redeemed yourself. Yay. Yay. Okay, talk to the people. My okay, so good. I'm just going to pour the dressing we just made over it. Now, let me tell you, you can eat this right away for sure, but after this sits in the oh, refrigerator yeah. overnight... Forget about it, mm -hmm. okay? Forget about it. We so delicious. Quite a mess here. All those flavors marry together, mm -hmm. and it is... This won't last. It won't last. No, it won't. It's so delicious. It's okay. so fresh. She's oh. telling us to wind down, so... Wind it down, sister. You go. Oh. I'm tasting, okay, too. I have because... to be careful, because I went to dentist this yeah. morning. Mm. Glory, glory. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> mm. That's my happy food dance. Mm. My mouth's full, I can't talk. That's delicious. You want this recipe. Yeah, you want it. Cowboy Caviar. Yes. How could you ever forget that name? So the information's coming up on your screen. Email me. It'll come right back to you mm. if the email's working. And also, um, if you don't do that, write to me. Give me an envelope with your name on it and a stamp, and we'll send it to you. And if you haven't met Carol before, you're going to love her. We're going to talk about being resilient. Very important. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may send your email request to artheline at rippy.org. Or you may write to us at the address on your screen. And in doing so, please include a self-addressed stamped envelope. We thank you for being a part of our Homekeepers family. Well, welcome back, Carol. Thank you very much, Always Arlene. a good day. I told the, it's always a good day when the Kents come. Well, you're so kind, and we just love your whole team. They're they just are the, the best. best. They, they are. are the best. And they seem to get along with each other, which is really wonderful. Yeah, we, well, we make sure they do, you know, when there's guests around. But yes. well, they, they really are the best. I praise God for them. I've got an interesting subject I want to talk to you about, but... We always have new viewers mm -hmm. and uh, give them a, just a capsule of the worst experience of your life because 
it seems like now everything bounces off of that. It does. And I, and I think everybody who's watching us today can probably identify with a time when you got news that was devastating. Uh, it might be a phone call, a knock at the door, or a, a child who got in trouble as what that's what happened in our case but you you know as a result of the devastation something about that crisis will forever change the rest of your life yeah. and that happened to us when we got the middle of the night phone call telling us that our son had been arrested for the murder of his wife's first husband and uh, you know the shock is overwhelming you feel like you can't breathe uh, I found myself unable to walk I was I literally had the strength go out of my legs and I crawled on the floor it was like I just did not have the ability to pick myself up right away and I had never experienced anything like that before I mean when you're a firstborn obsessive compulsive uh, of six preachers kids you know you're used to being a can-do kind of person <laughs> oh yeah I mean nothing like this would ever come near oh, your life oh and you raised this seems like a perfect child. He, well, he wasn't perfect, but he certainly was not difficult to raise. He was and, graduated from Naval Academy. He, he was a Christian. He yes. uh, had, mm -hmm. he didn't know, if, if I remember right, perhaps he might go in the ministry or even to politics. And uh, he was everything you and Jean could be proud of. Well, we were very proud of him. And I think it, it demonstrates once again how in this world we, we have the enemy and he is going around seeking whom he may devour. Right out of the Bible, we read that. And I think he looked at my son and he saw his weak point, which was trying to protect his two young step stepdaughters, a six-year-old and a three-year-old, because they there were multiple allegations of abuse involving the biological father. And it appeared he was about to get unsupervised visitation. And I think my son, fresh from military training, uh, how to protect and, and guard our freedom and keep people safe, somehow uh, everything the enemy threw at him got all confused in his mind until he made the most devastating choice of his yeah. life. And, uh, you know, we always want to say, Arth Lane, how much pain we feel for the victim's family. I mean, anybody watching this show who's ever been uh, a part of having been victimized mm -hmm. by a, a crime or somebody they love has been, mm -hmm. oh, how we feel deeply for them. But I do know that my son, in the middle of the pressure, uh, the time constraints of what he was doing in these schools with the Navy, made a devastating choice, yeah. thinking he was protecting his children. And today he would stand up and say, oh, I made the worst choice of my life. Uh, I, I mean, I just made an idol out of my ability to protect my girls instead of entrusting in God alone to be their protector. I should have taught them to dial 911 and scream and run. And because I yeah. made that devastating choice, we're and, in trouble. Um, Yet, even in all that, Jason is in prison today serving the Lord. Yes. He's winning people to the Lord, and um, it's all going to come together. You're all going to be together again one day. Yes, we are. Ever. But looking back mm -hmm. in all of this, I've often, many times, said we only see God in hindsight. I, that's too bad, but I think it's very true. And so you... The thought to you came, I, probably you'll get it in a book one of these days, uh, <laughs> uh, resilience. How did that uh, develop into something that you, you'd even write a whole paper on it? Well, uh, resilience is the ability to bounce back after going through extreme circumstances. And I think all of us have known some people who are destroyed by what happens to right. them and others who are able in time to be able to say, Lord, what are you teaching me? Uh, what are my next steps? How can I use what's happened to bless you and to help other people? And I, I think there's a difference when we can say, Lord, with your help, I am going to be resilient. I am not going to allow this to destroy me. And I watched Jason making that choice every single day. And Arthelene, he was the very first person to ever, ever introduce me to the possibility of speaking on resilience. I, I was at the prison one day and he talked about that. And I thought even as recently as a few days ago, 
I've been struck with the need that he's had to be resilient. Uh, oh. You know, we can't call him. He calls us with digitized calls. Mm -hmm. And he said, Mom and Dad, we're in lockdown. I said, what? And he said, yes, he said, all of the prisons all over Florida are in lockdown for several days and there will be no visitation this weekend. We are locked in our, our dorms and in our cells. And uh, he said, uh, we have a very regimented way we can go out for meals and then we have to go right back to our cells. We don't have our jobs because evidently there has been a threat. Some of kind of threat, yeah. Potential um, upheavals or, or rioting. And uh, he said, we don't know all the details. We just have to comply. And I thought, you know. What in, a way to live. In, yeah, what a, what a hard way to live. And they, we haven't heard yet if the lockdown has been removed, but that's been since last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, and then to lose visitation priv privileges is so hard for inmates. And I thought, Jason, your attitude is teaching me how to be resilient in yeah. the middle of hard Lockdown, places. Yeah. Yes. And I, I thought to myself, you know, resilient people embrace the benefits of struggling. You know, what am I going to learn from this? Uh, how, how can I grow as a result of this? Mm -hmm. And Arthlene, I'm going to turn the tables a little bit on you today because <laughs> you're always interviewing me. But I uh -oh. wonder, has there ever been a time in your life when, when you just thought, I'm not going to recover from this. I mean, I cannot bounce back from this and still say, you know, God, you are good. You are trustworthy. How will I ever do this? Have you ever been at a point in that? Oh, yeah. There, there were a couple. Uh, of course, a lot of people know my husband was a great preacher and all and mm -hmm. took a wrong road. He, he took his life. I still had two teenagers oh. at home. Oh. Uh, both the children are cancer survivors. My uh, son, juvenile onset diabetic, had to have a kidney transplant. His wife gave him a kidney. Mm. And it's, it's very hard to see three teenagers on the outside yes. while both parents are rolled into the operating room. And, um, but I will say my son has been a pastor for 25 years in Montgomery, mm. Alabama. So the Lord has totally sustained him. But I, th I think necessity sometimes, although some people do cr crumble and they mm -hmm. can't carry on the necessity. I had two children and I had to keep going for them. Yes. Thank, thank yes. God when you'd want to crawl mm -hmm. right under the carpet. And I remember one distinct moment because uh, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. But I always like to, you know, remind people when you popped out of your mother's womb, God was there and he handed you a free will. Uh -huh. And he doesn't mess with it that much. That's he right. Shows you the, and so you can pray and pray and pray, but people still make their decisions. Mm -hmm. They make their own decisions. And I remember I was 98 pounds mm -hmm. on the floor. And I just remember this one sentence. I said, I said God, I'm going to stick with you. That's not an issue. I don't know why I said that. Mm. Because I've known ministers' wives that didn't stay with him. Yes. I've known that. It was just, maybe that was a seminal moment. Mm. Might have been. Well, we all want to say thank you for making that choice because you continue mm. to bless us in so many oh, ways. Bless your heart. And every time we've been with you, we, we drive back home in our car and we say, doesn't Arthlene just inspire you oh. and uh, encourage you? It, and you are oh, thank that you. kind of a bright light in a room. Well, one of the other things I've been learning is that resilient people do not allow criticism to crush them. And I remember being in Canada. Get out of the ministry. <laughs> I remember being in Canada for a speaking engagement and there was a sign right by the platform. It said, please do not take pictures of the speakers as they address the audience. Shoot them as they leave. <laughs> and of course. Well, I, I've wanted to do that a few times. Well, of course they were talking uh, about flash photography. Yeah. But it, in real life, I think sometimes we, we shoot our wounded and often it's Christian shooting Christians mm -hmm. and we have to be so aware of n not allowing mm -hmm. criticism to totally destroy us. And uh, I, I think of the many times when people just, just don't always get us. They don't understand mm -hmm. why we've, we've made the choices we've made. Or they'll say, isn't it embarrassing to have a son who's in prison? And uh, I, I know it's with that, you know, your mind wants to say that's their way of saying you are a bad parent. 
Mm -hmm. You know, your child wouldn't be in prison if, yeah. if you'd been a better parent. And uh, I have to quickly just say, you know, God has allowed these things to happen and we, he gives us free choice and then we have to choose what we do with what, what has happened. Did you and Jean question yourselves after that? Oh, I think many times. And we You'd were, have to do it with a fine tooth comb. I mean, you oh, raised a boy yes. in church. We, we kept saying, you know, what did we miss yeah. in the parenting classes? Yeah. Uh, you know, we had read the Christian books. I mean, <laughs> we, I think we read every book on raising raise children that James Dobson ever wrote. And I thought, <laughs> what in the world did we do wrong? Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you can't let that crush you or you just cannot go on. And I, I think one of the things that to me has been the most important is that resilient leaders say yes to small opportunities. Yes. And when you're going through the hard time, um, you have to say, you know, the, what I'm doing today might seem like a very small thing. I know we probably have people who are ministering to an aging parent and the parent has become the child and the child has become the parent in some ways. Mm -hmm. And they say, does this really matter? Yes, it matters. Mm -hmm. It matters to God a lot. And uh, sometimes we, we say, well, this ministry is important and this one isn't. And I think of Jason. You know, some people would think, well, you know, why do you even educate an inmate who's never going to get out? Yeah. Because what will they do with their lives? Yeah. And, and it just breaks my heart when I hear that because when we educate and encourage people, it gives them purpose. Mm -hmm. And can you have meaning and purpose when you have a life sentence? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I had a wonderful saint. <laughs> <laughs> I now, see the little yeah, the oh, way watch you, out. you said that. <laughs> Tell me if you care anything about your kids, you'll get out of this town. Oh. And you know, she did me a favor. She really made me mad. <laughs> I mean, there was a righteous indication. And I had my house up for sale. And I went home and I jerked the for sale sign out on the, line, out on the lawn and uh, said, I'm staying. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I'm going to do some things in the southeast and I want you to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Christian television wasn't here then. And th there were other things and other opportunities. So um, sometimes God uses those really mean people. Yes. Um, that can help you to react and react. Uh, maybe it's righteous indignation or something because she was really rude and unkind. Mm -hmm. But um, it kind of solidified. Uh, I was going to move to Iowa. <laughs> oh. And <laughs> this is really crazy. My sister and her husband were pastors at a big church there and they were helping me find a job. And I was going to move there. And I th look back at that. That's the dumbest idea anybody ever had. <laughs> I, I had two teenagers that would have rebelled yes. to the heavens, you know. So um, the Lord brings things that, that will touch that resilience, yes. that will stimulate it, make it happen, make it move. Mm -hmm. It's so true. I bet you've had a few insulting things because oh. you have a son in prison. Oh, I have. You know, things like the comment uh, somebody said, well, it's too bad your son didn't just shoot himself after he shot the victim because yeah. then you would suffer for a while and you'd get over it. But the way this has happened, your pain won't be over for the rest of your lives. Mm -hmm. And I think people don't always mean to be so thoughtless, but mm -hmm. oh, words can hurt yeah. so much. And, and I think as we think of this whole idea of resilience today, that uh, resilient people don't try to make pain where there is no pain. I think of my sister. That's a good idea. <laughs> uh, have you known anybody who creates oh, pain yes. just so oh, they yes. have yeah. somebody who might feel sorry for them if they yeah. express their mm -hmm. need? But uh, my sister Jenny was uh, serving with her husband uh, at near a military base. He was in the mm -hmm. service as an attorney and she was there as a military wife teaching school in a little mobile classroom that had grass coming through right through the floor. Mm -hmm. It was a very remote area of Louisiana. And uh, she said one day, this darling little girl, Tracy said, oh, my ear hurts, teacher, my ear hurts so much. And she said, well, honey, what's wrong with your ear? She said, it's my pierced ear, it hurts so much. <laughs> and Jenny said, well, Tracy, you just come up here and sit on my lap, let me check your ear out. And she looked at it and she said, why, Tracy, you don't even have a pierced ear. <laughs> 
And she said, well, I know, teacher, but it hurts where it's going to be, Pierce. <laughs> and yeah, let's I, look ahead to the men's I, misery. Of little, little Tracy, yeah. you know, making up pain yeah. for a little attention. Oh, I've known them. And I think as, as leaders, sometimes we need to realize what, what's a real issue here. Yeah. Are people really hurting in another area, but they can't quite verbalize yeah. it, so they had to make yeah, up and, a reason and the Lord to can, be needy. The Lord can lead you to uh, pinpoint the problem. You know, this is such a great subject, but we're already out of time. No. Yeah. May I, do I have time for one more okay, quote? Yeah. For the Christian, resilience is not toughness. It's living hope. It has roots in God's unchanging faithfulness and gives us the momentum to get up again and again. That's resilience that right is. there. You nailed it. You <laughs> nailed it. And it's a good thing. If you don't have it, the Lord can help you. Um, but stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Artheline would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. What a great topic. I, I think I'd like to address that again sometime, you know, get into it a little more, uh, because, you know, God wants you to bounce back. He wants you to keep on living as long as you're here, you know, no matter what kind of situations you've faced. And I, I really believe that what Carol had to say can make a difference in your life. I want to offer you this again. I can do this diet. This book has the information just loaded with information by a medical doctor. And the Bible says, good understanding giveth favor. And maybe you've battled this kind of thing for years and years. But good understanding giveth favor. And uh, he has put the things in this book for you to understand uh, how you can really get on a better path and be healthier. So the information is on your screen. You can use your credit card or you can write to us. And uh, we will appreciate it very much. And the contents of this book, if you read them and take them to heart, can be very, very helpful to you. And it is always a joy to come for you to come and join us and for us to, you know, come into your home or wherever, wherever our meeting place might be. It means so, so much. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the sweet notes and letters and emails. And I'm just deeply moved. Anybody who takes the time to encourage someone, appreciate it so much. And I do hope you'll join me next time. And remember, friend, there's nothing higher. No higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 